I'll be showing an end-to-end -end demo of the new Reading Progress in Teams. Reading Progress is a new, free tool designed to improve student reading fluency through practice and educator insights. So I'm here in my class team, and I'm going to go click on Assignments right here. And then we'll go down to the bottom, click Create, and choose Assignment. We'll give our assignment a title and some instructions. And now the key part to make this a Reading Progress assignment. Go here and click Attach, and when this drops down, go and choose Reading Progress right here. This opens up the Reading Progress page. The first thing you want to do is add a reading passage that you want your students to practice. Right here, I can upload a Word document or a PDF, and also note very soon, we're going to be adding the ability to choose Word documents and other files from a Teams channel or existing files you might have in a different team, and we're going to add the ability to attach a OneNote class notebook page. Not quite ready yet, but coming in the next couple of weeks. The other one is browsing a sample library. This is rolling out very shortly as well. So if I click browse sample library, we've licensed a set of content from ReadWorks right here and a lot of different passages that you can try out across different grade levels. This can allow teachers in your district to really quickly try out and see how this works without having to find your own content. We'll close this though, and I'm just gonna upload a Word document to keep this simple. There's my Word document and it immediately converts it onto this page and now I can go and edit this if I want. So let's say I chose a PDF or a Word document and I wanted to tweak it a little bit. I can click edit and right here we have some simple editing options. You know, I can delete different things and change things and I hit the check when I'm done. If I wanted to choose a different passage, maybe I didn't want this one, I just click here to go back. But on the right hand side are the most important parts. These are the settings for your reading progress passage. The first one is reading level. Now you can enter whatever data you want here. Maybe you use A through Z, or you could use one through 10. You don't have to use a reading level at all. In this case, I'm gonna set it to the level J. You choose your genre. In this case, I'm gonna choose nonfiction. Number of attempts, you have unlimited here, and I can choose up to 10 attempts. Maybe I wanna say, I only want them to try four different attempts, but in this case, I'm gonna leave it at unlimited. Then there's pronunciation sensitivity. I like to call this the picky dial. How picky did you want the software to be? If you're going to use auto detect to listen to the students read, you can set how sensitive it's going to be. For example, I might have younger readers and I could choose less sensitive, or maybe I have more experienced readers and I could set it to more sensitive. In this case, I'll leave it at default. Lastly, require video. By default, requiring video is on, but if I don't want the students to have video and just record audio instead, I can turn that off. In our example, I will leave requiring video on. Just a note, for iOS or Android devices, we don't currently support recording video, we do audio only. But in the next month or so, we're gonna be updating our apps so they support recording video as well. So whether it's iPad or iOS or Android tablets. So stay tuned for that in the near future. Lastly, we have this capability that was educator requested, the student view. If I'm an educator and I wanna see exactly how this is gonna look and operate before I make this assignment, I wanna see what it looks like on the student side, I just click this button right here. Hey, now I can see the microphone pulsing. I have four tries left. I click this to start. I'm not gonna go through and actually read the passage, but you can try that out. I'm gonna switch over and show what it looks like for an actual student to be reading. And if you wanna exit the student view, just click right here, exit. Okay, let's finish up our assignment. In the upper right, click Next. The passage is attached. I could give some points if I wanted. I could add a rubric. I'm going to assign this to my entire class right here, but with Teams, I could individually assign this if I wanted to, but in this case, we'll do the whole class. Let's go up and click Assign. Okay, the assignment has been made. Now we'll switch over to the student and show what it looks like to read this out loud. Now we're showing the student side. And I'm gonna go down here, and here is that assignment geography. Open that up. And you're going to see a special little icon next to geography. I will click this. Now the first time that this runs on the student side, they will have to click allow so they can allow permissions to the camera, the microphone, and the speakers. So when I click allow, that will turn on the camera and it'll test the audio and video. Now we have Zoe here and she's going to start reading this passage. One other thing, we have immersive reader technology so Zoe can change the way the page looks so it's more comfortable for her to read. So we're gonna quickly show what that looks like and then Zoe will start reading. Let's go.
The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. They can also be glaciers or rivers. People need water to drink. They also need it for washing. Through history, people have settled near fresh water. Now, as always, done with the reading, she can click the little play button on her video to watch and listen to herself read. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. She can also click the start over button if she wants to give it another try. But in this case, she's all done. She's going to click I'm finished and then it'll upload the video. Now the video is uploaded and attached to this reading progress assignment. And now just like a normal team's assignment, I'll go in the upper right and click turn in. Now we'll switch back to the educator view and show how the review student work portion works. I'm signed back in as the educator and I switched over to assignments and here are all the ones that I've made. I'm going to open this one and now I'm going to review this student's work right here and I click on the student. Now we're in the teacher review experience. This is the normal speed grader on the right hand side, but we've replaced everything else with our reading progress experience. You can see the passage here and it's marked. You can see correct words per minute, and here is the accuracy rate, the number of attempts, the levels, and the number of words. By default, we've turned on auto detect, and that is the speech process that listens for things like mispronunciations, omissions, insertions, repetitions, and self-corrections, which are tallied up at the top here. A really important note, you don't have to use auto detect. I can turn this off. Many educators think they have to use auto detect. You don't. Also note that auto detect is marked as preview right now. We hope to be improving this in the future and we've rolled it out for many different languages. I'm going to be showing it in English American language and we have a full list of the languages that we support at the link in the description of this video and on the screen. So you can turn auto detect off and manually mark things, but we're going to demonstrate with auto detect on first and then I'll show this with auto detect off. Now I'm here with auto detect mode on, and you can also change the pronunciation sensitivity that we talked about, AKA that picky dial. I can change this per student. And in this case, I'll leave it as medium, the default, but I can make it less sensitive or more sensitive really easily. I'll start by playing the video of the student reading. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. Now you can see it marked bicycle as a mispronunciation and it auto detected that the student said that word incorrectly. I'll hit play again. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. They can also be glaciers or rivers. I'll hit pause and I'm going to jump down to a different section right here. It looks like the word region was mispronounced. So what I can do is click on this and I can choose jump to word right here at the bottom of the menu. Let's watch what happens. Reggie and Reg are often. I can jump to the word and see the video and hear it. Maybe there's another word like right here that was actually correct. I can click here and choose correct and it will unflag it. We also detect omissions. In this case, it looked like she skipped a few words right here. I'll click on borders and then choose jump to word. Borders, freshwater source. It looked like she skipped those three words. That was automatically flagged by our auto detect feature. We also detect both repetitions and self corrections. Right here, it looked like she repeated a word. Let's jump to the word and check it out. Feature, features of. Yep, she repeated that word. We also have self corrections. Many times a student will mispronounce the word but then catch themselves and pronounce it correctly. This is something that many educators have requested. I'll go to combination here and jump to word. Com combination of factors that people use to do. So it catches those self corrections as well. Another nice thing is that I can make the video full screen. So I'll click here to go full screen and now hit play. Source, sources also influence where people settle, people need. If I click this button to go back to normal screen right here, now I'm back in the same smaller video. But at full screen, you can get a close up, you can watch the mouth movements or whatever else might be helpful in identifying what's happening. As I mentioned earlier, I can also change the pronunciation sensitivity. 
I can change it to make it lower. Maybe I have early readers or maybe I have a student with a severe speech impediment. I could also put it higher and it'll be more picky. This is that picky dial. So I'm gonna put it to high and it actually marks a few more words incorrect. I'll set it back to medium. As I mentioned before, you can turn off auto detect. So in this case, I'm gonna turn it off. Maybe I just want to watch the video and listen and mark things. So now I'll hit play. The study of Earth's landforms is called by There's a mispronunciation. <laughs> and let's say I go through and I mark up these different mispronunciations and other aspects. And as I'm listening, I can mark all those different things specifically. So I can go in manually and mark up this, just like I might use with paper and pencil. Now it's just digital. And as you can see, as I mark the different words, the accuracy rate updates automatically. The last thing I'll show in manual mode is the ability to insert or delete words on the passage. Let's say right here, she said people also need to drink water. And this is when I was listening. If you click on a word here, you'll see this edit text. I click that and I can say insert left or right. So I want to insert right of the word people. Click that. Now type in the word she said. So I'll type in also and then hit the check to OK it. This adds the insertion right here, so now you can mark it exactly how you want to. And you can also do something like remove a word. So I click here, I can go and I can just say remove this word. So this allows an educator to easily manually mark up the text. You can use this in manual mode, but you can also use it in auto detect mode. I can add feedback right here, just like I would in a normal Teams assignment. So let's say I say great job. I can add other details for things that I might want her to work on, and then I can just return it like I would in a normal assignment right here. And I can drop down the speed grader and navigate to the next student so everything fits right into the same flow that you normally use assignments. The last piece I'll show is our insights and analytics. So all of this data is captured and put into our insights tool, which I'll show next. One way to get to insights is you'll notice in the upper right there's a little link to insights. This will drill you into the insights directly for this student right here. But what I'll do is I'll show the broader insights and how you can look at students as well as the class. Now I've closed the assignment and we're gonna speed ahead and I have a bunch of different reading passages that I've already assigned, students have submitted and I've given feedback on. We're gonna go into the insights tool and look at these dashboards now. What's nice is Insights right here is now pre-installed for every class team. You used to have to add it manually, so Insights is pre-installed and ready to go. So we'll click right here. Now we're in the Insights area for my class team. It has all sorts of insights and data about what's happening in my class, including assignments and student activity. At the bottom here, you're gonna see Reading Progress has shown up, and this will happen automatically if you've made Reading Progress assignments. In the near future, we will also be adding spotlights. Spotlights are already in Teams for things like assignments, but what you'll see is there'll be reading progress spotlights that surface different patterns and interesting things happening around reading in your classroom. Now let's go click here on reading progress to drill in. Here's the main reading progress dashboard and I'll go full screen. These are our first dashboards, but expect these to improve over time. We have average words per minute and I can hover over a different assignment and see what is happening all the way from here to here to here. Next, I have average accuracy rate. I can hover over to get more details, so mispronunciations, omissions, and insertions, and this is across the whole class I'm seeing right now, and I can hover. If I go to students, I can drop this down. Maybe I wanna go down to Alex Wilbur. Now the data is redrawn just for Alex, and I can see different types of average words per minute for Alex, as well as his accuracy rate. I can also drill down to see this month versus the last 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. Let's go back to all students. If you've added reading levels, I can drop this down and now I can filter by those reading levels that we added when we first created the assignment. So if I wanna look at all the J passages, there were four passages signed with the J reading level. And I can also drill down by students just like we did before. So here is Arden and the J passages that he has read. I can also go and choose the K or just say no reading level if I didn't enter any. Let's go back to all students. The last area is the word cloud. So if I scroll down here, I can see the challenging words and we have the size of the word here represents how many people had challenges with it. So if I look at physical, it looks like there were mispronunciations nine different times. There are some other words like strawberries and Olympics that people are having challenges as well. I can also filter on a specific student. So I'll go here and filter on Arden. 
Now the word cloud redraws for Arden and you can see he was having problems with the word Olympics. So this is really handy to see who's having problems across a class or looking at specific students like we are here with Arden. So that is your full tour of reading progress in Teams. We hope you try it out and we look forward to your feedback. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.